Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz EV. The fully electric EQS sedan from Mercedes-Benz. Innovation on a magnificent scale. And uh, the vehicle all electric, the feeling all Mercedes. Learn more at MBUSA.com slash EQS. She's the head coach, uh, women's head basketball coach at Iowa. Lisa Bluter in her 24th season as the Hawkeyes head coach. Kind enough to join us. Coach, how much sleep last night? Not a lot, and that's okay with me. The voice sounds like uh, you, you were coaching. That's a coach's <laughs> voice right there. Yeah, it's a coach's voice in April for sure. A little gravelly, uh, but that's okay. It's, it's working, and that's all that matters. What did you learn personally from the loss last year in the title game to LSU? You know, I really learned – what I learned the most about being in the Final Four last year and, and, and being in that game was the amount of – this is going to sound like the amount of rest that you need. It's just like, it's so tiring going through this process and the, in the sweet 16 to the elite eight to the final four, it's, it's extremely exhausting and just making sure that we spend less time on X's and O's and more time on recovery and rest. Well, that's what I marvel at that. You see these scores, you know, it's Kobe, it's Allen Iverson. Every night they have to go out there and have more energy than the opposition. And that's another thing that amazes me about Caitlin. She doesn't come out of the game, and you're playing at a really fast pace. Um, how do you kind of coach her so she's not her own worst enemy? Well, you know, we play like that all the time. And, I, that you know, it's not like we just started playing like that now. We've been playing like that for years, and that's her style. She loves it. She's comfortable with it. Believe me, she never wants to come out of a game. If I try taking her out of a game, it doesn't go down so well. So. Uh, she wants to be on that court. Explain your tempo and how do you get to the game to your tempo? You know, we just try to push hard on every rebound. Anytime that we have the opportunity to get a stop, it's going to result in us being able to push. And it's just a philosophy. I love getting down and we'll take some bad shots out of it. Some people get so worried about, you know, they have to have the perfect shot. We're going to take open threes and transition. And yeah, you might have a few more turnovers. I can live with that because I think it puts so much pressure on the defense over and over again, and it wears on them by the fourth quarter. When's the last time you yelled at Caitlin? Probably last night. <laughs> I haven't seen her yet this morning, so <laughs> not yet today. Wait, how could you yell at her after last night's game? Because <laughs> she's Caitlin. Got to keep her humble. Okay. Explain to me when you call technicals in practice on her. What is the message <laughs> you're trying to send to her? You know, um, we bring in officials to, you know, and they're, and they're not like division one officials. And we bring in officials to work our scrimmages. And sometimes they get a little bit more intimidated of her than they should, I think. And so, yeah, when she acts up in a scrimmage, I'm going to tear up because <laughs> that's the only way she's going to learn. Right. I mean, she has to learn to control her behavior and control the controllables. Officials are not a controllable. Don't bother trying. When did you give her the green light to shoot whenever from wherever? Probably when she walked on campus because she was capable of it. You know, it's it's our dunk, right? I mean, it's it's something that nobody else can do in our game, probably men or women. And she's fearless. And so, I mean, she was she was doing this right from the beginning. But actually, her her range has increased as she's been in the weight room. You know, in her freshman year, she's pretty scrawny. She's still kind of scrawny, but you know, now she's got a little bit more muscle on her and that's helped her shot range as well. Okay. 24 years in the sport. If I would have told you 10 years ago, five years ago, you're going to have a transcendent player. You're going to have, you're going to have a Steph Curry. What would you have said? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, um, you know, everybody, everybody, when they're recruiting, oh, she's the, you know, great player. Everybody knows she's a great player, right? Everybody knows that. But to me, it's like, nobody can predict that somebody's going to become this good. And if they say they, you know, if they can say they predicted it there, that's, that's hogwash. That's not happening. What kind of relationship do you have with Gina Oriema? You know, I, a friendly relationship. Um, you know, we're not like close friends or anything like that, but we spend some time together with USA basketball and, and things like that and on the recruiting trail, but not somebody that I've, uh, you know, spent a lot of time with. What was the message at halftime last night when LSU ties it up right before you go in? Yeah, it was, hey, tie game, 20 minutes, you know, and we thought they were getting tired at the end of that second quarter. So let's come out with a lot of energy, 
Um, and, I, and I thought our team did. I thought our team started the first and the third quarter with great energy and kind of took control of that game right off the bat. You know, when Caitlin comes out of the locker room, she's got that look in her eye and she hits that, th- that deep three in the first possession. I thought, okay, things are going to go okay. Looking back on last year's title game, correct me if I'm wrong, but it felt like LSU got into her more. They were more physical. They were putting a hand in there. And then you had Haley Van Lith this time around. And how surprised were you that that was their strategy against Caitlin? You know, I thought Haley did a nice job of keeping her in front of her. It was, you know, we had to give her a lot of ball screens to get her to the rim. Um, I think I was surprised she got to the rim so easily in the first quarter. And then they kind of adjusted after that. But um, I thought Haley did a nice job on Caitlin. But I, I think it was a more physical game last year. Yeah, it just felt like they were going to try to frustrate her. I don't know if they even got close enough to frustrate her because it felt like last year she was maybe taken out of her game a little bit. Yeah. And I think, um, she got married to the three too much last year. Um, you know, she took a lot of threes last night, but last year she wasn't making them. Uh, and she just kept going and going and going. And we just, we tried to encourage her in the first quarter, get to the rim, get some easy ones first. I thought she did a really good job of that in the first quarter. You're looking at these crowds though. And coach, you're seeing young girls there with their parents showing up early, wearing jerseys. I mean, I wonder what the impact, I mean, Caitlin's impact in 10 years from now, seven years from now, five years from now, what do you think it's going to be on the sport? I think there's a lot of little girls and little boys out in their driveways this morning trying to shoot like Caitlin Clark. And I think that's just so good for our sport. It's, um, you know, she has come up, come at the very right time with the NIL, with social media, with all the television coverage. She has come at the perfect time to help this this sport explode. And um, I think she's going to have a long-lasting effect. And the the next generation is coming up. we got great players coming up around the country that are young, um, and they're just going to take it from here. I did ask her last year, I said, are you given any thought to staying an extra year? And, And she said, yeah, because I love it so much. With NIL... Like, you know, she's going to she'll still make the endorsements, but, you know, the NIL is still playing. Did you did you have any conversations with her about going to the WNBA or, you know, maybe coming back for another year? Yeah, absolutely. I had conversations with her. I had conversations with her parents. Um, you know, we obviously wanted her to come back. Right. I mean, that was a, a no brainer for us. But, um, you know, it was a hard decision for her. And she looked at it as, as a win win situation. And um, I think she's at peace with her decision to go to the WNBA. And um, I'll be her biggest fan there. What's the schedule this week? Uh, This afternoon, we're heading to Cleveland. Uh, So we're going to go out and have a nice team dinner tonight. Kind of uh, get ready for our scout tonight. I haven't even started that, but we'll, uh, we'll have that ready for the team tonight. And then a couple of practices and a lot of hoopla that goes on at the Final Four that's fun, but can also be really taxing. So we're going to be careful of that this year. Do you have advanced scouts that were at the UConn game? Not live, um, but we've been working on them. Uh, we were, had scouts ready for USC and UConn, and so we're, we're prepared. Coach, congratulations. Have fun in Cleveland. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Let's go, Hawks. That's uh, Lisa Bluter, the uh, Iowa women's head basketball coach in her 24th season. Got that coach's voice <laughs> this time of the year. Is